The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Sometimes we wake up in the morning with a glimpse of a dream that we have had. It's often hard to remember all the details of a dream, but sometimes just an image from a dream will hang around with us for a while. And if we'll take the time to pay attention, that image can be helpful to us. A while back, I woke up with just a snippet of a dream. It was of a cat racing through a crowded intersection. The cars were whipping by in different directions and the cat was scurrying right through the middle of them. And that's all I could remember. It was an unsettling image and as you might imagine, I was dealing with some rather threatening stress at the time. But after a few weeks of thinking about that image, I came to the more peaceful realization that the cat in the dream was not squashed. Its speed and agility, along with some inexplicable good fortune, were protecting the cat from all that danger. And yet the danger was very real. 
There are two images from our lessons today that I invite you to carry around for a while. Take some time to pay attention to them and learn what God might have you learn on your journey. The first image is from Isaiah and is an old dead stump with an alive new sprout growing out of it. What might that represent to you in your own life? It's such a hopeful image, yet one with some sadness as well. We might wonder whatever became of the tree that used to grow tall and broad from that stump. All of that is long gone, and now something new is growing. It will take a long, long time for that sprout to grow into a full tree, but there is that new promise right there for us to see. A promise in a place that the world has written off and forgotten about. Out of something the world thinks of as dead, here comes new life. When we think all is lost, that everything that is good is in the past, that is often when something brand new will present itself. We didn't cause it. In fact, we had given up. And along comes surprising growth. Life keeps popping out in surprising places. Mull that over these next few weeks as the year draws to a close and a new one emerges as the shorter dark days play themselves out and yield to longer, lighter days. As you think of what has died in your life and what is now beginning to grow. The second image is in Matthew. It's an image of a winnowing fork being used to separate the wheat from the chaff. In some ways, that is a more threatening and violent image. We might focus on the good wheat, which can serve as food, and the evil chaff that will be burned up. Some have even thought of this as a forceful God taking the good to heaven and sending the bad to burn in hell. But maybe there's more. Chaff serves an important role in the development of wheat. Chaff is the hull that protects the seed as it grows into something useful. Chaff is the container in which the contents grow and develop. Without that container, the contents would never survive. And yet, there comes a time for the container to yield to the growth of the contents. Over time, the contents outgrow the need for the container. They are ready to take on the world and blossom and flourish. The winnowing fork helps that process along the fork is used to pick up a heap of straw and then is shaken back and forth until the chaff falls away from the wheat. The forceful image also connotes, connotes gentleness and care. When it is time for growth, life jostles us and invites us, forces us to let go of the defenses we have held on to because now we are ready to emerge more fully. We might recognize this as the development from childhood to adulthood, where we leave the protective environment our parents have provided and move out into the world on our own. There are stages of development as we go through. All are necessary and purpose-filled Sometimes we cling to childish attachments and life pushes us forward. Sometimes we develop defenses in our early years that we have to let go of in order to be adults. 
John Bradshaw writes about the wounded child that is within each of us. As children, we are dependent on someone else protecting us. When we are hurt as children, we might learn a defense such as dissociation, where we literally take our mind somewhere else in order not to feel pain. As adults, we have to learn to be our own parent and care for ourselves in ways that will help us grow. We learn to be more present with our pain rather than running from it. We learn to stand up for ourselves and establish healthy boundaries. We let go of those old defenses and discover an inner strength we have not known. Richard Rohr has a book we have used in a class here entitled Falling Upward, a Spirituality for the Second Half of Life. There he talks about the two major tasks in human life. The first task is to build a strong container or identity. The second is to find the contents that the container was meant to hold. In the first half of life, we build the container, what Rohr refers to as the false self. In the second half of life, we discover the contents, what Rohr refers to as the true self. That true self is the quality of life that we come to church to find. We're here looking through the word and sacraments to find what is real and true, what is life-giving, what is eternal amidst the temporal. Jesus is that new sprout coming up from the old dead stump. He is the promise of life where we thought all hope was gone. He is the indication that goodness will not die. Even though death is real and unavoidable, that is not the end of God's purpose. There is more. Jesus is the winnowing fork come to us. Not to take the good to one place and the evil to another. Jesus comes to jostle the world, to shake it enough to allow the contents to be freed from the container to bring our two true selves to life so that we might embrace the wonderful fullness of living and loving. It helps when we cooperate, when we wiggle free of that old container and embrace our potential. But the winnowing fork does its work even when we do not cooperate. The power of that which is greater than us does not work only when we let it. That power which is greater than us ever so gently and ever so firmly shakes us free and brings us the goodness that we seek. Amen.